Hi, my name is Xavier Wallette. I'm 25 years old. I'm currently living in Montreal in Quebec, Canada. I studied industrial design at the School of Design of the University of Montreal, where I've learned to play with cultures, experiences, and emotions, and articulate them into a design project. My college education was in architecture, and it's something that really colored my vision of design, maybe with an idea of scale that goes beyond what we usually expect of industrial designer. I would talk about my project AFLO, which is a marine structure that aimed to reduce the impact of erosion on coastal communities. We're living in a time where environmental issues have never been on our mind at this particular level. We hear about climate changes, deforestation, ocean rises and coastal erosion on a regular basis. Uh, in my country, one of these issues that affect many cities and villages is the problem of coastal erosion and it's really something that resonates to me as a young designer. The idea that we as a community and then as an individual can make things change is something that really challenged me through this project. I wanted as an individual to bring a solution to the problem of coastal erosion, but eventually or even mostly I'd say to bring awareness to this uh, issue so we can think about it collectively. So that was my thought process during my project. Uh, I wanted to create something that informs us about a human-centric issue and then open our eyes on a sustainable way to work on it. We often refer to coastal erosion as the problem of coastal erosion. In fact, erosion is a natural phenomenon that transforms the ground into sands and rocks and it creates long surfaces of beach that will reduce the velocity of waves and tide and protect the shoreline. The problem, in fact, is not necessarily the erosion itself, but rather the fact that we built too close to the shore for a long time. It happens all over the world, including here in Quebec, in the region of Gaspésie and Magdalen Island, where we lose at some places meters of ground every year. And this issue happened here, but also in California, the UK, Netherlands, in New York, and so many other places. Houses like this one, there are nearly 5,000 that were threatened by the year 2065 along the coast of Quebec. Yeah. For the same period, nearly 500 kilometers of road are at risk of damage. Because of climate changes, the ice cover that protected the riverbanks during winter storm is less and less present, which leaves them vulnerable to storm. The most affected regions, which for a long time lived almost entirely on fishing, now base a large part of their economy on tourism. So the threat on these regions is a threat for their entire economy. As I said, for the past 50 years, we've built along shores and then protected with walls to prevent the waves from reaching the buildings. Over time, it creates a coastal wedge which prevents beach natural movement and makes them smaller and smaller. It completely destroys marine ecosystems and it leaves the shores unprotected. This is Road 132, which runs along the region of Gaspésie is the only logical way to travel from one region to another in case of emergency and it gets ruined every year. Art protection is placed there but it never helps in the long term and it creates vulnerability. It creates uh, emotional, social, physical and economical vulnerability and we can feel it through the words of citizens and scientists. Uh, there is a consensus that we need to change the way we do things shift from an approach that perceives shorelines as static and firmly rooted in the landscape to instead admit that their boundaries are far from being fixed and well-defined. Still, people in danger will often use traditional protection systems when they feel their life is threatened, which remains totally understandable. With that in mind, my question was mostly how can I create something that protects coastal communities from erosion while protecting natural spaces and ecosystems? So I base this project on different types of existing coastal protection system, but my, mainly art engineering and soft systems. Art engineering like tetrapods have a huge impact on ecosystems. When waves hit the structures, it creates movement in the seabed disturbing the ecosystems. Also the construction of structures like dike requires thousands of tons of concrete and their installation is damaging aquatic fauna. On the other hand, their modularity makes it possible to adapt the protection of the configuration of the shore to be protected, and this was an asset that I wanted to keep. 
Natural systems, like mangroves and other types of vegetation, will diffuse the current instead of trying to stop it completely, which is a much more sustainable method for the surrounding ecosystems. And the idea of diffusion is really something that inspired me for my project Aflo. There's also soft systems like fences installations on beaches that reduces the current, but it still sees shoreline as something static and fixed. Um, so what I've tried to do is, in a way, address the gaps of those two systems. I wanted to find a, a solution that embraces the dynamic aspects of shorelines. Aflow is a floating structure fixed to the ground by cables and anchors to reduce the impact on ecosystems. The arrangement of module, which reminds a little of mangrove roads or even coral reefs, diffuses the current before it hits the shore. It maintains beach accessibility and keeps them in their natural state. It's made of aluminum foam, a floating material that makes it possible to reduce the object mass by 80% if we compare it to a concrete structure. The project can be installed in several contexts, uh, alongside roads, villages, and close to ports. Uh, it can even be used to protect beaches during the beach nourishment process. Uh, a big challenge was to find an optimal shape that will allow the best diffusion of the ocean current uh, over the greatest distance using the minimum amount of material. Then I wanted the object to be uh, poetic in a certain way. I was inspired by the Brutalim style, like the structure that we can see in this architecture current, but with a much more softer and natural contrast. Uh, I wanted to be austere in a certain way, to remind us that it was not meant to be there, so it can start discussion about why we got to this point and then how we got to a solution that doesn't put us human in the center of the story. I tried to think of the product uh, as a whole. The different part can be stacked so it optimizes transport. Uh, the light structures can then be transported by boat on site and can be relocated after a certain time if necessary. Once installed, we can imagine the structure as an habitat for vegetation and different types of aquatic organism. The idea is to contribute to the habitat, not to harm it. I also tested the diffusion process to ensure the effectiveness of the concept. By simulating a storm on a shore, we can see that the sediments at the foot of the standard protection systems are dragged offshore. While with the new proposal, the displacement of sediment is almost non-existent, with less accumulation of water on the other side of the structure. So basically, it reduces the strength of waves that hit the shoreline. It doesn't stop them in an aggressive way. It's only there to maintain a certain balance in the ecosystems between the ocean, the shoreline's ecosystem, and us. So in terms of product design, I think that AFLO is a good start to answer the problematic of coastal erosion, which was my primary goal. But I also wish that the project helps drawing attention to this crucial issue for coastal communities. If AFLO succeeds at opening minds on alternative solutions, it will already be a step forward.